for us to fellowship together. I thank God for you. I thank God for the grace he has lent to us. We will be sharing the word of God briefly as we take brief prayers. Lord, today once again as thou usest to do. Send us from your bakery above the bread of life. The bread of life, Lord. Let it come from your presence. Even the bread of your presence. To bless men and to bless women. To bless my hearers to change their mindsets, their value systems, to bring them out of their darkness into your marvelous light, into your glorious presence. Thank you, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We'll be taking our scriptural bearing from Genesis 48. Genesis chapter 48. Reading from verse 1. And it came to pass after these or these things that one told Joseph. Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob, and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee and I will make of thee a multitude of people and we give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. We are going to read beyond this place later on. But for now, I'd like us to pause there and go to read Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Considering verse 21, 20, 21, 22. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, 
when he was a dying, he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of the staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. I want us to look at this phrase, thy father is sick. Thy father is sick. And it came to pass after these things. That one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Number one point I would like you to take home is that nothing is everlastingly stayed here. Nothing at all. I would like you to take it to heart. Nothing at all. It's everlasting here. And it came to pass means there is nothing visible, touchable, that will not come to pass. It will surely come to pass. It will surely come and it will pass away. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly, all shall pass away. And it came to pass Beauty surely with time in due time we pass away. Handsomeness in due time just give it time what we call handsomeness robust body well-figured person that handsomeness will come to pass. One of these days what we admire today what we cherish today things we run after today with time in the process of time, the glory and glamour will just fade away, it will shrink, then it will pass away. Positions will surely pass away, and it came to pass. For any of you listening to me, who are privileged to be on a seat of power on any seat where you exercise influence over other lives. I just want to remind you that around every throne and every seat is a badge, an emblem, written tenure. It's about tenure. It won't be forever. You will sit there forever. Political throne in a democratic setting is set for four years. You will climb down and begin to fight again, campaign again, with all the heat attached. To know whether you will be re-elected to climb there for another four years. If you succeed to be there another four years, coupled together, you have eight years. 
you won't be there again. Whether as governor, as president, you can't come near that thing again. It will now come to pass. That is why the word of God is laboring to remind you that any seat, any opportunity you have, to exercise influence and leadership over human beings. Do good with it. Do your best to serve men, serve people. Don't be a boss. Don't rule, lead. Lead men, lead women. You don't have the whole time to be there. Then your ship will surely come to pass. Even nations who run the throne of monarchy, they don't believe in democratic setting of four years tenure. Diaz is a man, a woman can sit there 40 years, 50 years, Fidel Castro. Of Cuba sat on his throne more than 50 years. The Fidel Castro is out. He's not there again. India mean Dada of Uganda had opportunity to sit on the throne of Uganda for years. Now India mean Dada have come to pass. Mobutu Seseko once was on the throne. He's not there again. He's gone. Political power comes to pass. Scepter, crowns come to pass. No crown endures forever. It's a matter of time. So what do you do with this information? It's for you to maximize the opportunity you have now. Whether so little or so big, an opportunity to serve others. To serve others. You won't be there forever. You won't have this opportunity and privileges forever. Whatever be your calling, whatever God or grace is giving you opportunity to do in your time and generation now, just note it quickly. That it will one day come to pass. Either death or sickness may remove you and you are gone. I remember many years ago, one time first lady of this nation was in a function where top government functionaries were there. Something happened and she was pushed down and trampled upon. It was a very bad day for that lady. Press ran after her. When she was finally raised up, they said, Ma'am, what do you say? We are sorry for what happened. With tears all over her eyes. She said, I was once a first lady of this nation. See what they did to me today. See now. I was once a first lady, first lady of this nation. See what they did to me. Her tenure and chance and time was gone and there's nothing else she could do about it. Talents, gifts, giftings will surely come to pass. I am a preacher. I am preaching to you now. I am bringing the word of God to you now. I won't be on stage forever. I am aware of it. I won't be on stage forever. I won't be on pulpit forever. This is my own time to serve God by serving my generation. To serve God by serving you. It's a matter of time. And then I will come to pass. My time in God's timetable we now come to pass. Another generation will come to replace us. 
That is why if I have opportunity to talk the word of God to people, I labor as much as grace of God enables me to tell my generation the truth and then come back to tell myself the truth. And it came to pass. After these things, excuse me, after these things, that one told Joseph, are you getting the point? That one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. The message is this. Many of you are not aware that your father is actually sick and tired of the way we carry our lives nowadays in the name of being children of God. You are not aware that your father is sick and tired of your lipsia services. Your lip shall services. God said with their mouth, their lips, these people show much love, but their heart is far from me. God is sick and tired of this hypocrisy. Thy father is sick. Sick and tired of preachers whose God is their belly. Preachers and puppets that have mammonized their mantle, mammonized the utterances God gave them because the God they serve in ministry is actually their belly. Their goal in life is let us eat and drink today, tomorrow we die, even if we are going to hell. Your father is sick and tired of this things. Our father is sick and tired of preachers who preach to inform rather than preaching to reform. God is sick and tired of it. Thy father is sick on how you do your business in your shop and at the same time you are called a Christian even if you are not a Christian don't you have conscience there is no preacher more powerful than conscience your father in heaven who made you who created you said I should tell you he is sick currently and presently and tired of all of these gimmicks, all of these hypocrisies, all of, all of these lies, who is fooling who in our time, in our generation? Poor pit is a place where men and women should be pulled out of pits. If your poor pit is not pulling lives out of dungeons, God said I am sick and tired. And listen to me, anytime God gets sick, and tired of any nation, he wipes away that nation. Anytime God is sick and tired of an individual, he uproots that individual. Where is Assyria today? Where is Nineveh? Where is Babylon? Where is Babylon? Mighty, glorious city. One day, their corpse became full. God became sick and tired of them. Idolatry. Human sacrifices. Bloodsheds. Terrorism. Nations that forgot God. Nations that did not put God in their thoughts, in their thinkings, in their actions, in their attitudes. They don't consider God. Every man, every woman does whatever is right in his own eyes. The message today is just to checkmate you. It's just to open your eyes, to take you to spiritual ultrasound. For you to check what 
what is wrong? That your father lamentably is saying, I am sick and tired of generations that have made lies their refuge. Lies their refuge. These students, you don't tell your parents the truth. Husbands, don't tell their wives the truth. Many wives are actually nice. They don't tell their husband the truth. Children who are heady and stubborn and arrogant to the leadership of their parents, God is sick and tired of this. One told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. Thy father is sick. Oh, thy father is sick. You need to do something about it and do that quickly. You need to do something about the health condition of your father. I'm using this. Not that God can get sick, but just as a type. Just to draw little, little, little meanings to communicate the body in God's heart to you. This is a generation. Every time we gather in vigils, conventions, convocations, church services, and all of that, it's, it's, it, the only thing we do is, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Nobody is giving to God at all. Nobody cares whether God has need or not. We have been raised to believe that God is just there as God to serve us. That God is just God sitting on a throne just to meet our needs only that there's nothing else God should be doing there. Nobody bothers to tell you that God has need. The other time, he wanted to go to Jerusalem and the scriptures must be fulfilled. He will not need to trek this time around or he will contradict the scriptures. So he sent his two disciples to a place where two roads met. He said to them, you will see an axe called tied there. Lose it and bring it to me. If any man, woman asks you, what are you doing? Or why are you doing this? Tell that person that the Lord has need of it. The point you are picking there is, are you aware at all that God has need? From thy kingdom come till today, what we do? And believe is that God is just there to make us millionaires and billionaires. God is just there to heal our sickness and our diseases. God is just there to remove our rheumatism, our cancer, and our ulcer. God is just there. God is just there to protect us. God is just there to put food on our table, furnish table for us in, our, in the wilderness, even in the presence of them that persecute us. But I hear the word of God coming in another dimension to you. That excuse me, your father is sick. Your father has need. Your father has need. Your father is sick. You need to do something about it. The reporter is reporting to you, Joseph, that your father is sick. I'd like you to pick this point. Pick it quickly. Let your spirit pick it. That one told Joseph. Excuse me. We don't need mega crusade where one million, two million, five hundred thousand rivers, sea, ocean, 
or human beings where they are preaching for a Joseph to understand the burden of his father and the condition of his father just one we don't need a committee meeting now just one one person like this can rise up to become a communicator to become an answer prayer to carry the burden of the father to his Joseph to his Joseph Joseph was not available Somebody needed to tell Joseph the current situation of his father. Joseph, a politician. Joseph, in the government house, not having time this time around to check how far and how his father was faring. Joseph got so busy with politics and politicking. Joseph got too busy with his family, wife, and children. Joseph got too busy preparing for the election or planning for something else. He was not aware of the condition of the dad. One needed to let Joseph know, and that is exactly what I am doing now. One told Joseph, not committee meeting, members. One told Joseph, not even in a, in a night vigil, just one, nameless one. This particular agent decided to hide his name, no name, no title, but he did a wonderful work for Joseph's father and also to Joseph. A wonderful ministry. No signboard, no billboard, no poster, but very effective and very powerful. No name, no title. Can you do that kind of ministry for God in a time like this? Can you hide your name? Can you be able to say no to all the empty titles that have weakened us and made us important in our time? We are so crazy for titles in our time. One told Joseph, say, behold, Thy father is sick. Another point I would like you to take home. Take it home to your heart is why Joseph? Excuse me. Why Joseph? And then why am I asking why Joseph? Because Jacob had 12 sons. Twelve sons. I hope you are getting the point. Why Joseph? Where is Reuben? Was he not a firstborn? Where is Isaac, Zebulon, Dan, Naphtali? Where are they? Where is Levi, the priest and priesthood? Where are they? Why Joseph, a politician? Why is the father going to a politician now? Where is the pastors? Why didn't he run to pastors? Pastor sons, bishop sons, apostles, senior ones. No, one told Joseph, a politician, excuse me, I told you here, time without number, that in any nation and anywhere, Anybody that fears God and respects God is acceptable to him. That's what Peter said in the house of Cornelius. He said, now I know. You don't need to be a Jew to be a child of God. Cornelius was a Roman centurion. Not a Jew. He has nothing to do connected to the gene or the, uh, the gene bank of a Jewish origin or ancestry. No. Pure Roman man. For he feared God. He respected God and reverenced God even as a soldier. As a soldier. Heaven saw this man and sent an angel who instructed him to go look for evangelist Peter. Who came and said, 
Even though you fast, you pray, you tithe, you do all of that, one thing is still missing. You are not yet born again. Your name is not yet in the book of eternal life. I know many, many, many people who do good things. They do good things as if they can bribe God with their own good works. God is too big for you to bribe him with your little thing from your pocket. Can you stop that embarrassment? What God is asking from you, first of all, is my son, give me your heart. My daughter, give me your heart. Have you obeyed that yet? Have you given him that gift of your heart? Excuse me. One told Joseph, I like it. One told Joseph. So where we are now is in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. The word of God said, when the Levitical order of priesthood could not give God what God wanted or needed from it because of the weaknesses and corruptions inside of it. God changed gear. Did you know that God changed gear and went to the tribe of Judah? Can you imagine? A tribe of which nothing was said about priesthood and found a priest there. I want to ask you, what do you learn from that? So this issue of priesthood is now is not is no longer a tribalistic issue that you must have color on your neck for you to be a priest. Have you seen this matter here now? See where the affection and the desires of the father is going. Can you see it now? Where the desire and the affection of Joseph went to Joseph. When you, you bring Joseph and put him here, you will see a full-time politician. What has Joseph now to do with bringing healing to a heartbroken father, a sick father, in one obscure place in Goshen, Goshen. He said, go and tell Joseph, amongst all my children, among all my children, take this burden of my current condition and situation now to my son Joseph. What about Reuben leaving the firstborns are unstable? Some of them are just busy fornicating with ladies up and down. He said, leave them. They can't bring any, any, any healing to me now. What about Simeon and Levi? The, their father said, look, Simeon and Levi, their anger is terrible. Their anger, temperaments are bad. If you go to tell them now, they may come here with a sword. I don't need them. They cannot help me now. Only the Josephs. And I believe you are one. I tell you, you must be one of them. And that's why Providence arranged it that you are hearing me and you are listening to this thing now. To this message. Any moment from now, I will begin to summarize all. I'm telling you the truth. Once you have caught this body and you buy into it, and stand out and slap your breast like this and say, Ah, God told me today that I am the Joseph of my time. I am the one that is holding an answer to the plight of our nation, to the plight of families, even to the condition of heaven. You know, the way God's heart is now, the bleeding heart of God, the bleeding heart of God. What the church has done to the heart of Jesus. What ministers of the gospel have done. Many of them, not all of them. Not all of them anyway. There are still remnants. But majority have wounded the heart of Jesus. Majority have crucified Jesus. Not just the second time. More than second times. One. Told Joseph, not committee meeting members, just one. I remember John the Baptist. Delegates were sent to him when and while he was preaching. They said, Who are you? 
He said, I am voice of one. Just one person can stand on the Lord's side and say, enough is enough to wickedness and God will use you madly. Just one man is less of. One man is less of. One John Charles Grand Symphony. One John Bunyan. Just one. One Charles Bojan. Charles Bojan. One Paul of Tarsus. One. One Moses. Not two Moses. One Abraham. That submit and yield to God. Out of him nation can be formed. By God. One medical doctor can stand. And strike a deal with God on the law side. And say, Lord, use me. What politician that we discover that I have not been doing well. And repent of his arrogance and pride. Just one politician. One Joe. A business tycoon. Became the best and most spiritual man in the land of UZ. I am surprised as I read my Bible. And look at the verdict of heaven, that the, the, the holiest man, you know, the best man in the land of Uzi was not even a pastor, but a businessman. God found a priest in a job. A man with impeccable character, so to say. A priest that born sacrifices for his life and business and servants and children. One, excuse me, it has always been not two, not three. One man that will yield. One young girl that will say no to the demons and spirit of sodomy and Gomorrah in our time and say to the devil, it is not everybody you prize that you will buy. I am too costly for you to buy my destiny. Just one girl like that. Just one young man like that. I'm coming to Hebrews. I believe time will allow me. Once God finds that man, that man becomes a staff. That's Hebrews that we read. Upon which Jacob will lean as this world is dying away. As the humanity in him is dying. The spirituality in him will not die. A staff to lean upon to bless a generation. One man that will become a star, not moth eating, moth eating, no. Not a star that is not reliable, but a star that is reliable. One man, one woman, old, young, rich, poor, white or black man, educated or uneducated, one told Joseph, Saying, thy father is sick and you are here. Look at, look at you. You are here watching television. And your father is sick and you are here talking, joking and jesting. Your father is sick and you are smoking him. Smoking away, betting away, betting away your life, your destiny, your economic life. Your father is sick. See what you are doing, Joseph. Is it what, what you should be doing in a time like this when your father is sick, your family is sick, the society is sick, the pulpit is sick, even the Bible we carry today is sick because of the way we handle the word of God. Is there nothing you can do, Joseph? Why you, Joseph? Why not Ruben? Why not Simeon? Why not Levi? Why not Benjamin? Why not God? Twelve sons. Twelve sons. But Jacob did not go to the eleven. He said, Tell Joseph that I am sick. Know whether he can give me any paracetamol. 
Many people I gave beauty and handsomeness and talent and gift is a headache to me. Joseph, can you give me any paracetamol? Any medicine at all that can stop this headache? Joseph, can you come and see my heart bleeding? See what men and women I created are doing to my heart. Help me tell Joseph, even the female Joseph that are listening to me, can you see the heart of your father bleeding? Help me tell the people I created that I have need. They are not the only one that have need. I have need too. Need of a staff. Need of a spokesperson. spokesperson. Need of a yielded one. Need of a someone that can submit all to me. And watch what I will do with his or her life. Someone that I can pick from obscurity. Can anybody help me talk to those Josephs, wherever they can or will be found? If they are in please tell them. If they are in the military, tell them. If they are, art, they are artisans, tell them. If they are journalists, tell them. And one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. See what he did? And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Hmm. Hallelujah. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. You know the point we are picking here? Immediate response. Whatever Joseph was doing, he dropped them. This is what mattered to him. The condition of my dad. See how Joseph responded to that call. That beckon. Whatever Joseph was doing before the messenger and the message came, he dropped him. If Joseph scattered his leg, in the presidential villa and was watching television, he grabbed the remote control and then put up the television. If Joseph was browsing or responding to mails, he stopped the browsing, he stopped mailing, he went to respond to that call. If Joseph was trying to, you know, have some nap, some recreation, he climbed down from the bed, dressed up, and ran toward Goshen to see and respond to the cry of his father. Joseph responded well. And while he was going to his father, he did not go alone. He took with him. All of you that are fathers, fathers, mothers, leaders, can you please note, note this? He took with him his two sons representing life. He took his household. He took his posterity, posterity, posterity in his hands and constrained them and carried them into his father's presence. Joseph understood the implication 
of the fact that his father was sick and dying, that this world system is dying, does not bother many of you. It bothered Joseph. He said, I need to collect all the blessings that I could, all the blessings I could gather. Let me go and gather it now and heap it upon the head of my posterity. Here is a wise man. Jacob was dying and he has Nevertheless, he has blessings to release. And if the man had died before Joseph arrived, no blessing. That those blessings heaped on his utterance would have died with him. He suspended every activity and ran to meet the father's need and collect the blessings, especially for his posterity, not even for himself. Have you seen a wise man? Many fathers today, you listening to me, you may be one of them. You are too busy. You are not wise you, like Joseph. Too busy, too busy. Pursuing prosperity. Not minding the posterity. Several mothers today, they don't mind about their children. They don't care about the souls of their children. We may take them to the best schools. We may take them to the best eatery centers. We may take them to the best saloon. We try to take them to the best uh, uh, shopping centers. But we don't take them into the presence of God. We take them out for sizes. We buy the best clothes for them, the best pomade to look, sorry, make their body look robust. How we advertise our skin. Even when the soul is partial called, nobody cares. Joseph did not do it like that. This time around that the world and the world system is dying. The world is seriously and speedily coming to an end. Joseph said, I will not take my children to Bar Beach now. I will take my children to nightclubs. I will not take them to be a palace. I will not even take them to churches where they play jamborees. Many churches today are equals to amusement park where people go to laugh and come back. He said I won't take them there. He took them into the presence of his father. He took them away from presidential villa to a local Goshen just to get blessings for them. To prepare and to shape their future and their destiny. And that journey, of course, if you are a Bible student, that journey and that decision that Joseph took that day actually shaped the destiny of Ephraim and the destiny of Manasseh. Imagine Joseph going to Goshen, leaving Manasseh and Ephraim behind, playing TV game, watching Tom and Jerry. Imagine that kind of, imagine what would have happened if Joseph had left these two children. He said, no, can you drop, drop those remote control and those games? Stop this game. My father is sick. And he said, I should come. Let's go into God's presence. How many families now? How many fathers and mothers have the time to even challenge their children to read their Bible? I'm talking about reading now, not even doing it. I'm just talking.
talking about a family custom where everybody must read at least a chapter in the morning before he or she goes out. Which father or mother can say they are doing it in our time? Now, I want to run, and I'd like you to run with me as we begin to close. <sighs> Let's go to verse 10. Oh, um, verse 8 is a beautiful one. Let's come from 8 down. Genesis 48. From verse 8. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons. They have arrived. They are there now. They are already into the presence of his father. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are they? Excuse me. Who are these? Are you aware that many fathers and mothers does not know the destiny of their children? Excuse me, man. Can you tell who your son or sons are? I'm not talking about their name. I'm talking about the ordinations they carry. Can you tell who they are? Jacob said to Joseph, who are these? Can you tell now, by reason of this query, the ordination of your daughters, woman? What if a pharmacist is there among your children? You can't even tell. See how you are chewing, chewing, come up and down. You, you, you don't care. Look at the query heaven is bringing. Who are these? They came from your, your womb. They sucked your breast. Hello, man. These children came from your loins. Who are these? Who are they? Are you sure we don't have another terrorist there? Are you sure? You are not raising another terrorist for us. Are you sure you are not raising a mother hardened global criminal here or drug baron? Who are these? Who are these? What are the ordination of your sons and daughters? Can you tell? How can you tell? You are not even in God's presence. You have not been there. You are not even preparing to be there. You may go to church, but you don't go into God's presence. While I studied and prepared my heart for today's fellowship, I was wondering this kind of question. Why this kind of question? And then my mind ran that this question is beyond normal and natural. Joseph, who are these that you produced? What did you produce? Is there any medical doctor here? Who are these? Is there a nurse here? Or are you, have you produced another prostitute? Another homosexual? Joseph, who are these? Who are your children? What are the days of your children? What can you say God told you concerning your children, your posterity? Oh, you don't have time for your posterity. It's about prosperity. Now, let me tell you the implication of ignoring and damaging your posterity at the expense, uh, uh, at the altar of prosperity. Slaughtering prosperity, posterity, sorry, on the altar of prosperity. You know the implication? All the wealth or riches you gather, you gather lands everywhere, houses everywhere, Gold and diamond everywhere. Do you know what you are doing? You are just gathering money for hypertension. You are just gathering something you will use for tablets and capsules for the rest of your life. If you miss it, in giving your posterity attention, giving your soul attention, you slaughter 
eternity on the altar of time and the ephemeral things. Ah, people that tried it before you are crying now in hell. And there is no other remedy to that mistake. Don't repeat it. Let this all trans and may say challenge you today to amend your way. You that is listening to me from wherever, can I ask you, who are these? In fact, let me bring it, who are you? Hello, madam, who are you in the place where matter matters? Who are you? Who are you in the secret where nobody sees you? Who are you? Who are you when your husband is not there? Who are you? What are you doing, man, with your house girls? Who are you? Even these house girls or house elves. Hello, girl, who are you? What are you doing against your mistress? Who are you? Then we now talk about who are you? What do we do with your product? Wisdom is justified by her children. Can your children justify you to be wisdom or justify you to be foolishness? I go away from verse 8. And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God had given me in this place. And he said, Look at, look at him. And he said, Bring them, bring them, excuse me, bring them, prayerfully bring them, bring them on your knees. Bring them with tears. If you have tears in your eyes, bring them all. Bring them to me all. Bring them all. They are a spiritual predator also. Bring them. He said, bring them. Bring that business. You can't handle it. Bring your health. You can't. Bring your mantle. Bring your challenges. Bring them. Bring your bodies. He said, bring them. No time. Bring them. They are my sons, whom God had given me in this place. And he said, bring them, I pray thee unto me, and I will bless them. Bring them, I pray thee unto me, and I will bless them. Now, the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them. And embrace them. Excuse me. Imagine devil. Imagine devil embracing your children. Imagine the demon of prostitution embracing the pants of your children. Imagine unclean spirits, foul spirits embracing the destinies of your, your, your family. Imagine that. If you don't bring them to Jesus, you don't bring them to light, darkness will embrace them. As for Joseph, very lucky man, and at the same time, a very wise man. He knows that politics will come to pass. He won't be on the throne of Egypt forever. Let me maximize this opportunity that my father gave me. Out of his 12 sons, he, he, he sought for me. He, he called for me. He said, I am the one that should come. And father, here am I with my two children, my brother. He embraced them. I want to pray for you. May God embrace you today as you respond to this message. Let his mercy, mercy, love, compassion, and truth. I, I mean this prayer. Let this mercy embrace you. As you quickly respond, as you repent, as you drop many, many, many things, just the way Joseph dropped whatever he was doing, he was doing, and ran. May mercy embrace you. May the love of God, the love of God, embrace you. May the peace of mind that passes all understanding of men embrace you. May his divine healing embrace you. May his truth, not their own, truth embrace your spirit, embrace your soul, embrace your mind. May the spirit of self control.
control. Embrace your temperament. Embrace your emotions. May you be counted a man, a woman of patience. Long suffering. May the spirit of long suffering embrace you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And Israel said unto Joseph, I have not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has shewed me also thy seed. I never thought to see you again. But God made me to see thee your seeds. Hey, you gave me two generations, not two prostitutes. Hey, you gave me two, gen two, two generations. Beautiful son, not two terrorists. Not two rogues and criminals. Not fornicators. You've given me two pillars with which to build Israel. He said, I never thought to see your face. Providence made it me seeing your face. I also saw that you now have products. What can you say, man of God? What has your ministry produced for God? Where are men that matters that you can say they came from the loins of your mantle? Can you show any timber or any caliber in the society that came by reason of your ministry and raising? Joseph showed too. And his father embraced them and adopted them. Beautiful, beautiful scriptures. He kissed them and embraced them. Excuse me, do you know what it will, it will take you for you to kiss God? I think uh, you, you, you know you should take serious toothpaste now. Uh, there are toothpaste to take. The way your mouth is now, you can't kiss God like this. You need to brush your tongue very well. I'm not mean, talking spiritual things. It's all of the kai kai in your mouth. You can't use it now. You know, to kiss God. Can you imagine that? For you to come this close to God, there are treatments. I, 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 I believe when I get to heaven, I will confirm that before this journey, it's like. Joseph for new. Is that clear? That this father, his father is a kiss, 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 kiss my kisses people too much. He called his two sons and said, brush your mouth. Imagine these children coming so close to the mouth of Jacob and one order, 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 foul order, host out. This man would have pulled back. This is how we miss the blessing. Where did you brush your mouth last? Even what you call toothpaste that you took is not original. It does not carry enough dark approval. It's a substandard one. It's not heavenly approved. You just gathered anything and rubbed it on your mouth. You called it paste. This thing cannot handle the decay and the rubbish and lies and foul, foul things. Venoms in our tongue and mouth. You need the original test of the word of God. And repentance. One or two more scriptures and then we'll pray. And Joseph brought them. I rem you remember, you remember in verse 9, tell end of verse 9, he said bring them. Then verse uh, uh, 12, and Joseph brought them. Bring them. And Joseph brought them. Bring them. And Joseph brought them. <laughs> Any, any of your child, even your life, your business, anything you did not bring and give to Jesus, Satan will take. Anything you did not give to light, darkness will take. Uh, if you are not careful with your health, sickness will come. Anything you did not bring to sound health and principles that guide sound health, sickness and diseases will claim it and destroy it. Anything you did not give to the Lion of Judah, the Lion from the pit of hell, the ruling Lion in Peter, we tear it to pieces. Bring them on to me. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees. Have you seen a release? From between his knees. You know, his knees. Let, let, let me try to picture if you can see me. 
These, these children were here before. They went and kissed. They came back. They were here on his laps from between his knees. This one sat here, this one sat here. He said, can you release them from your bosom? From your laps? Can you give them to me? Can you give them to me? Can you give them for my service? He brought them out from between his knees and he bowed himself with his face to the earth, teaching these children how to worship. How many president and vice president and today politicians and the lifted and uplifted men and women can bow like this before Jesus? How many of you? How many people like this can bow with his face to the earth? He did like this. Manasseh and Ephraim were watching their dad bowing to grandpa. Hallelujah. I am tempted to let me leave 13 some other time. Maybe next week, God willing. I would like to give verses 13 and 14 a very ample time. Okay? I would like you to chew what you have today. What do you say? To what God said. What is your response? God said many things. Which one is your portion? Which one? Of God's portion of goods, can you say that this one falls to me? This one is my own. This one is not my own. But this one is my own. Where are you in God's presence? Where is your husband, mother, in God's presence? Your father is sick. Your father is sick and tired of this shallowness, of this hypocrisy, of this unseriousness. What we have nowadays is manage, manage, manage everywhere. You hardly will see marriage. Your father is sick and tired of this place. And any time you bring God and pressurize God to come to the point of becoming sick and tired of you, the next thing is total wipe off. He did it to Sodom and Gomorrah. He did it in the days of Noah and saved just eight persons and started afresh with them. He did it to Babylon, mighty Babylon. He wiped them away. Somebody was showing in the net and I laughed. He said, look at China going to the moon and sun and sky. That's very good. He said Nigerians are carrying megaphone up and down, mocking Jesus and preachers. I want to tell you that China is not even up, up to one time of Babylon. If God wish, we will go to the sun and moon, but that's not it. This megaphone is better than going to the moon. Where is Babylon today? But Israel, who carried megaphone, is still here. Israel, that God busy talking about Jehovah and how to please Yahweh, <laughs> that's still here. With all the shakings that have come against Israel as a nation, Israel will stay trapped like this because of their megaphone. All the nations that went to the moon before China and before America, they are now completely wiped away. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God. 
You made yourself a fool, dear, not me. The word of God says you are a fool. Oh, I'm not the one. I'm just an interpreter. Saying that there is no God. We will keep on with this metaphor. We will keep at it and keep with it. Until our nation turns to God. God bless you for listening. If you have gleaned anything that bless your soul, bow your head, let's pray. When you talk to God and say, Father, please help me. Pray like that. Help me, Lord. This is chapter 8. Oh. Lest I forget, as we are praying. This is chapter 8. Or well, 48, sorry. Genesis 48. Look at it. 49. Look at it. 50. Two chapters in between we enter Exodus. Exodus is not far from here. And your father is sick. Pray. 48, 49, 50. Exodus. Departure from this Egypt. Can I ask you to talk to God and say, Lord, you are sick and I'm not aware. Your father is sick. What have I been doing? Why is God talking to me like this? Give me, give me. God said it's time to give him. It's time to look at your father's heart and even heartbeats. Pray. As you meet God's need, your own need is chicken change. As you labor his vineyard, God has vowed he wants to labor your vineyard. And it came to pass. Show me anything that will not come to pass. Today, best role models, car role models, will soon fade away. The most beautiful, most designed clothes today in the next five years will become a rag. All things will come to pass. Hold that man that will never come to pass. Hold the head. The Bible said, people are holding many things, not holding the head. Not holding the head. You are holding titles, you are holding money, you are holding certificate, you are holding degree, you are holding mirror, you are watching your face and watching your figure. You are not holding the head. All of these things you are holding will come to pass. Pray and say, Father, help my life. One told yourself, I'd like you to pray. You may be that one that God has been looking for that will become a star in Hebrews, upon which God will lean in this end time. That God will lean on you to do signs and do wonders and do exploits. Jacob, when he was dying, leaned on the star. May you be that staff. Pray and say, Lord, make me that staff that you will lean on. In the office where you work, may you be that staff, that reliable staff that cannot break and pierce God's hands. That reliable, dependable staff, that human being, the mindset, character, and the godly character threat that God can lean on, God can depend on to do signs, to do wonders, to help your generation. May you become that one. In Jesus' name. Father, bless your people. Convert this message. Let it be fire. Refining the, the divine nature, your divine nature in your children. Let this fire refine your divine nature in your children. Let it do the work of refining, refining your divine nature in us. 
Let this message become a key, a key, a key, unlocking every satanic padlock. Opening up to your children doors of prayerfulness. Their prayer life that died, oh God, reopen it. Save of them that lost their shoe, their spiritual shoe. Father, recover their shoe. Recover their antenna. Recover their spiritual mast. Recover their wisdoms and knowledge. Recover their prophetic gift and giftings. Let this message bring back hope to your people. Let this message, oh God, give your children awakening, awakening, awakening. This world is dying. This world is coming to an end, to a close. And God is saying, whoever will be a Joseph to me, come. And why coming? Come with your children. Come with your marriage. Come with your household. Come. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name for answer prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, I have prayed for you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm so happy to be your servant again. And I believe God strongly that the little, little things I have said will go a long way in shaping your destiny, correcting your life, to correct your ministry and your calling. May you be fruitful. May you be effective. Yes, may you be effective. May you be a force and a voice to reckon with in your time. God bless you. Till I meet you next week, let the fire keep burning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye for now. We believe you have been blessed by these instructions. For further inquiries or counsel, please contact Vale of Ibom Seed Time and Harvest Revival Labels, Ogidi, Anambra State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 081 90 or 081-157-606-73 Email More Sure Word of Prophecy at Yahoo.com Gmail More Sure Word of Prophecy 77 at Gmail.com Website www.veilofhebron.com May the Lord grant you grace to walk in the light of the truth you have received in Jesus' name. Amen.